Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to learn how we can calculate the isoelectric point of a peptide. Now to do that, you need a little bit of prerequisite of titration curve of amino acid. Titration curve of amino acid. And you also need to know how to calculate the charge of peptide the charge of peptide. Now I've already made videos on these two topics. What you can do, you can go down to the description, there would be two links, and you can watch the videos from those links, and then you can get back to this video and start with it. So, without further ado, let's start and learn how we can calculate the isoelectric point. Now, calculating the isoelectric point for an amino acid is quite simple because you get the pKa1, you get the pKa2, you add them up, you take the average and you get the pi. So this is very simple. But what if you have more than one amino acid bound together by peptide bond? then how would you calculate the PI of this overall peptide? I do not want the PI for a single amino acid, but I want the PI to be calculated for the overall peptide. Now, how do we do that? We're going to look at an example, and we're going to work through that problem, and we're going to find out the PI for a peptide instead of a single amino acid. So, let's say you have a peptide, a tripeptide of lysine, glutamic acid, and histidine. Now, lysine is a positively charged amino acid, so it is going to have a positively charged side group. And histidine is also a positively charged amino acid, it is going to have a positively charged side group. Whereas glutamic acid is a negatively charged amino acid, it is going to have a negatively charged side group and apart from that lysine is on the n-terminal so it is going to have the alpha amino group and histidine is on the c-terminal so it is going to have the alpha carboxylic group whereas the alpha amine group of glutamic acid and the alpha carboxylic group of glutamic acid they are participating in the formation of the peptide bond some more bit of information that are provided to you are the pKa values, the pKa values for the various uh, amino acids and the side groups. So for lysine, for lysine, the pKa of alpha amine group, this is 10. The pKa of the R group, this is 11. Next for glutamic acid, we have only the R group. So the pKa of the R group, this is 4. And next for histidine, the pKa of the alpha carboxylic group, this is 2. And the pKa of the R group, this is 6. So these are the informations that are provided to you. Now we're going to use three steps and we are going to calculate the isoelectric point of this overall tripeptide. So step number one, step one, you need to take this tripeptide and put it in a very extremely acidic pH. And why we're doing that? Because if you put the tripeptide in a very acidic pH, then all the groups are going to be fully protonated because very highly acidic pH means uh, a lot of H plus ions. And since there are massive amount of H plus ions, that is going to protonate the tripeptide and make it the maximum positive charge possible on that tripeptide. So let me write that down. The first step is going to be find the maximum 
positive charge possible by complete protonation. So, right now we are having lysine, glutamic acid, and histidine. So, since lysine is a positively charged amino acid, it is going to have NH3, and since we are putting it in an extremely acidic medium, this is going to be fully protonated, and it is going to have NH3+. plus. Same for histidine, NH3+. plus. And the lysine has the alpha amine group. So this is also going to be NH3+. Next, we come to the histidine, which has the alpha carboxylic group. And this is going to be CWOH instead of CWO- because this H, H+, plus is coming in and is forming the CWOH. And finally, we have glutamic acid, which is a negatively charged amino acid. And it also has a CWO minus side chain. And since it is fully protonated, it is going to have CWOH. So this species, this full tripeptide now is fully protonated. You cannot put in another extra positive charge into this. So it has been maximally protonated and it has got the maximum positive charge possible. Now, let's calculate what is the maximum charge, what is the maximum positive charge. So, you have plus one for this, we have plus one for this, we have plus one for this. And since these two are neutral, it is not having any charge, so we are not going to consider that. So, plus one, plus one, plus one, it is plus three. So the maximum positive charge possible is plus three. Next, the second step, step two, what are we going to do? We are going to vary this maximally protonated tripeptide into various different pH, and we are going to bring the charge to zero. So let me write that down, vary in different pH and bring the charge to zero. We're going to start off with this plus three because right now it is maximally protonated and we are having the maximum charge to be plus three. So there is this thing with pKa and the pH when pKa is less than pH, that species tends to deprotonate. It is going to lose hydrogen ion. When the pKa is greater than the pH to which it is subjected, it is going to protonate. That is, it is going to take in a hydrogen ion. And finally, if the pKa is equal to the pH to which it is subjected, then there are going to be half protonation and half deprotonation. So these three are the various different conditions that can occur. Now we are going to vary these pKa value that we have and we are going to see whether that group is being protonated or deprotonated. So, we have a starting of pK value with 2. Nothing, uh, I mean, no pK value is less than 2 in this case. So, we are not going to go with 2 or any of the pK values that are equal to the pKa because that's going to create this condition where we have the pKa is equal to pH and there would be half protonation and half deprotonation and that's going to complicate our calculation. So what, instead, what we're going to do, we are going to take the pH values that are in between these pKa values. So we have 2, 4. We're not going to go with 2 and 4. We are going to go with pH of 3. Again, 4 and 6. We're not going to go with 4 and 6. We're going to go with 5. And we're going to vary accordingly. 
Now, for for the PKAs, let's say if we are taking at pH three, that is the pK value of two and pK value of four in between this, we are taking the pH three. So if we are taking the pH three, this group that is the alpha carboxylic group of histidine, this pKa is less than the pH that we are taking. So at pH 3, the pKa of the alpha carboxylic group at histidine, so this is of histidine, the pK value of the alpha carboxylic group, this is less than the pH value because this was 2 and we are taking the pH of 3. So what will happen? This is going to deprotonate. And since this is deprotonating, what we are doing, we are removing an H plus and we are getting a charge of minus 1. So what is the net charge now? We started out with plus 3 because this was, this was the overall charge that we got when we, when we had put the tripeptide into an extremely acidic pH. And since this was plus 3, so the overall charge now after the deprotonation of the histidine alpha carboxylic group, it is plus 3 minus 1, it is plus two so next we're going to work with this so we have got the plus two next at a ph of five why did i take five because i have four as a pk value i have six as a pk value so i took the ph that is in between them that is five now at a ph of five this group the R group of glutamic acid, that is this group. The R group of glutamic acid, the pKa is less than the pH. So of glutamic acid, the pKa of the R group is less than that of the pH because this was four and we are taking a pH of five. Again, the molecule is going to deprotonate and it is going to be minus one. So right now the overall charge is plus two and we are again taking out a proton minus one. So the overall charge is now plus one. I hope I'm clear up till this. Next, next what we have, we have six and after that we have 10. So we can take any pH in between 6 and 10. So let's generalize that and say at pH of 7 to 9, the same thing is going to happen. At 7, 8 and 9, the same thing is going to happen. The charge is going to be the same. Now, at pH of 7 to 9, we have this 6, this PK, this pK of the R group of the histidine, this has 6, this has 6 as, if, as its value. And since this is less than the pH to which we are subjecting it, then this is again going to deproton it. So for histidine, for histidine, the pKa value of the R group is less than the pH to which we are subjecting it because the pK, the pK value is 6 and we're subjecting it to 7 to 9 and this is going to deproton it again and it would be minus 1 again so right now we have plus 1 reduce one charge and it is zero, right? So we have that, that pH at which the overall charge of the peptide is zero. 
So we varied the pH. So we varied the pH and we took out the charges according to that and we got to the charge where it is zero. And what do we call it when the charge is zero? We call it a sweeter ion. So right now, at the pH of 7 to 9, at the pH of 7 to 9, the overall charge of the molecule is going to be 0. So at the pH of 7 to 9, the tripeptide is going to act like a sweeter ion. So the second step is done. We got the pH at which the charge is going to be 0. Next, we are going to calculate the pi from the pk that was before this and from the pk that is after this. So the third step, step 3, calculate the pi or the isoelectric point from the pKa before this, or let's say to be the pKa1 and the pKa2, that is after this. That is, we took the range of 7 to 9 and we got the charge to be 0. So what was the, so what was the pKa before this? This was the pKa before this, that is 6. That was the pKa4. That was the pKa for um, the R group of histidine. And after this, we have, after 6, we have 7 to 9. So 6, then we have 7, 8, 9. At this range, it is 0. Again, we have 10. So 10 is the pKa of the um, alpha amine group of the lysine. So we're going to take this as pK2, this as pK1, and we're going to average it out and get the pi. So we have 6 plus 10. We're going to take the average. So 6 plus 10, 16 by 2, and the pi is 8. So the pi, or the place where it is going to be exactly 0, the charge, the overall charge is going to be exactly 0, it's going to be 8, right? So this is how we can calculate the pi or the isoelectric point of a peptide. I showed a tripeptide, but this same method can be followed for a tetrapeptide or pentapeptide as well. So this is how we can calculate the isoelectric point and we can uh, take the overall charge we can vary it in different pH and get the pH where it is forming the Zwitter ion and take the pi from the average of the pK1 and the pK2. So that was it for this video. If you like the video, do give me a thumbs up and share this video with anyone who would need to know this. Thank you and until next time.